A number of sports that we go into, such as football, judo, karate, kickbox, and what have you, like in football, for example, the coach will always teach you how to take a, a lick, to take a fall, to take a tackle before he allows you to tackle someone else. You go into judo class, they teach you how to take a fall before they show you how to actually throw someone. You go into kickboxing, they teach you how to take a punch, you build up your chin, you build up your neck, so you can take a good shot upstairs, like the drill I was just doing there with Cedric, you build up your midsection, so you can take a good kick, a good punch downstairs, because just like when I was in the Marine Corps, they said before you learn to give an order, you must learn how to take it. Same thing in a fight game. Whether you're doing grappling arts or striking arts, before you learn to dish it out, you must first learn how to take it. And weight training is an excellent way to build up not only your body, but that inner confidence to prepare you for realistic combat of whatever nature you're into. Now, I started weight training when I was 14 years old. Uh, I trained off and on for the last 30 years since I've been in martial arts. I'm over 50 years old now, and I lift about two, maybe three months out of the year. I lift no more than twice a week. So the routine I'm showing you today, I only want you to do it maybe twice a week until you get used to the, the exercises. Then you can work up, increase the sets, or increase the number of times that you're actually trained. Now, this particular routine we're going through on this tape, we're not doing any heavy squats or any heavy deadlifts. That's more for advanced weight training. We're going to concentrate primarily on the structural muscle groups, which are very uh, imperative for your martial arts skills, such as punching, kicking, throwing, your takedowns, your chokes, and what have you. Um, I want you to think about the different things that I say as we're going along, for example, if I'm talking about a particular muscle group that we're working on, why I do an exercise a certain way. For example, we're not doing any curls or any arm work in this particular routine. We will be doing some pulling motions, which does build up the arms, but one problem a lot of bodybuilders have are people who do lift weight, they get too big. They, they uh, put too much what we call the intercellular fat between the muscle fibers. And one problem you're going to run into there is, for example, if I'm throwing punches, I need to use my hands to shield my body. If I build my chest up too big, like my pectoral major muscle here, then what it does is, watch this, it sort of forces my elbow out and leaves a little gap in here so I can get popped with a shin bone for a kick or a foot or a good body punch up in here. Now, you always want to be able to take your thumb and be able to pull it up and actually touch your shoulder. A lot of people can't do that because the forearm and the bicep's too big. And the problem you run into there is, if I need to protect my chin when I'm fighting, I want that hand up there and the arm straight up and down like this. If my bicep is too big, it forces my hand out and it leaves me wide open for a hook heel kick, a hook punch, or a round kick in there. And you say, well, just lift the elbow up like that and cover it. Doesn't work that way. Another problem is when I'm sparring, this is the center of my body. I always want to give my opponent as little a target as possible. In order to do that, I want to keep my hands in front of my body, not just my hands, but also my form. Use the form as a shield. And my chest is too big, my arms are out like this. My muscles in my back are too tight. It pulls my arms back, it leaves me wide open. So I want to be able to do this, touch my arms together if I need to, if I'm actually sparring. In the fight game, particularly boxing, kickboxing, karate, we want thick shoulders, slim, lean arms, so we have quick hands, not big puffy arms and big puffy chest. We want the body to be kind of slim and flat here in the front part. We want a thick type of barrel chest so you can take a lot of punishment. The upper part of your legs, you want them thick for throwing high, fast, strong, powerful kicks, and you want a thick back. But remember, when you're lifting a barbell, here's where we run into a problem. It's a mental conditioning factor. Weightlifters grab a barbell, when they grab it, they tighten up. Then they exert effort. Then they put the barbell down, then they relax. In boxing, kickboxing, and the other sports, uh, the martial arts, it's just reversed. The mental action is reversed. When you get ready to move, you relax, then you move. So the problem we run into is the mental condition. When you grab a barbell, you tighten up, then you move. Then we go into the ring, you get ready to exert effort, you tighten up, then you move. So you carry that same mental effort from weightlifting over into the martial arts. That's a no-no. That's where we run into the problem. Weights are, no question about it, hands down, the best thing to do 
to improve your uh, muscle size, your symmetry of your body, or improve strength. When you improve the strength of a muscle, it does make you faster. 20, 30 years ago, football coaches used to kick you off the team if you lift the weights. Now they kick you off the team if you don't lift the weights. You want to improve your athletic skills, uh, enhance your talents, definitely, definitely lift weights. Okay, take this out a little bit more, Cedric. Now as you go side to side here, you can work it on down to where you can go way down like this, stretching these back muscles out, get rid of, rid of any kinks that maybe the barbells put in there. It's not that weights make you stiff and tighten up the muscles. Any exercise you do makes you stiff and tighten up the muscles. You go into a yoga class and stretch that body around. I guarantee you the next morning you're going to be stiff. See, so don't blame it on weightlifting. At least the people who lift weights are doing something. Keep in mind, we're talking about toughening the body, strengthening the body. Weight training makes you very aware. One of the building blocks of self-esteem is to live consciously. I got this from a friend of mine, Dr. Nathaniel Brennan. By living consciously, you're making yourself more aware of your body. As you become more aware of your body, the second step is you start to accept yourself more. These are building blocks to self-esteem. Then you become responsible for what you're doing. Remember, you are the author of your goals, your ambitions, your wishes, and your wants. Don't let somebody else dictate what you do in your life. Then you start to become feeling more self-assured and you start asserting yourself more. All right? Then you become more efficient in your life. And keep this in mind. As you improve that self-esteem, that is the very core of this thing which we call the fountain of self-confidence. And there's not a better way of doing it than to get your own home gym like what I'm doing here or going to a decent boxing center or a nice health club, but I recommend you doing it at home and start lifting weights to improve your overall well-being and your skills as a martial artist. Hang in there.